Now let's look at communication. What is communication? Movement of a person from one place to another, person, goods or service, they go from one place to another, that was transport. In communication, a message has to go from one place to another. So conveyance or sending, transporting, conveyance means transporting of message from one person to another or from one place to another is called communication. It is not new. We all always used to communicate. We had so many means of communication since the ancient times. Now let's learn the importance of communication. From the examination point of view, it is very important students. It helps in quick transmission and dissemination of ideas, information and messages from person to person and place to place. Now students, see we have this mode of communication through a YouTube channel. We can share your lessons with you. So transmission and dissemination is possible because of the means of communication. It helps in creating awareness among the people about government policies and programs of development. Let's say because of coronavirus, the government announced so many policies like they said you should wear masks, you should stay indoors, you should follow the lockdown. All of this was successfully achievable only because there were so many means of communication. It enables us to know about natural hazards. Students, we have a coming chapter called Natural Disasters where we see how the impact of flood, how the impact of a cyclone can be reduced so we can give warnings of weather forecast to people and reduce the losses that happen. All of this happens only because of means of communication. It provides entertainment, day-to-day -day information of the world and it helps to maintain the unity and integrity of the nation. Today, India has various modes of communication. There are two main categories, personal and mass communication. Personal is when you pick up the phone and speak to your friend and so on. Mass communication is like you air something on the television, you broadcast something on the radio, you make your own YouTube channel. It's for the masses, it's for everyone to see. That is mass communication. Letters, telephone, telegram, fax, email, internet, seminar, conference, all of these are types of personal communication. Learn any three children Newspaper, radio, television, magazines and books come under mass media. Here also learn any three examples. Now let's talk about various modes of communication. Just like how we learned various modes of transport, we will learn about various means of communication. First one, postal service. So when you write a letter, put a postal stamp, send it from one place to another, that is covered under postal service. You can send letters, you can send parcels and so on. This is one of the most important communication system that existed since a very long time in India. Post offices provide many services such as carrying letters, packets, parcels, money order from one place to another. They also provide savings bank facilities which we learnt in the chapter of banking transactions children, issuing national savings certificates and so on. Telecommunication. It refers to communication of a distance by a cable, telegraph, telephone, fax, etc. In India, telecommunication network has reached almost every remote corner. Like, have you heard of a place like, okay, here if I call, telephone call doesn't go. It goes to almost every possible location. Telephone and mobile phone services have replaced telegraphs today. Next, we have radio and television. Students, radio and television will come in personal communication or mass communication? Hmm? Are you paying attention? Very good. It will come under mass communication. It, they have a very, very, very important role in mass communication. Even in remote places of India where people can hear messages on radio and they can watch television. They are very useful for several areas because farmers get up to date information about the weather forecast, about agricultural problems and they can also learn modern methods of cultivation like what are the best scientific practices to grow crops they can know by watching television. They provide a variety of 
programs such as educational and informational news, entertainment, all India radio was coined in 1936. TV broadcasting was started under the, the name of Doordarshan or DD at Delhi in 1959. Next we have newspapers. They are very important communication channels especially under the print media. More than 1 lakh newspapers and periodicals in different languages are registered in India. 41 newspapers have a history of more than 100 years. The oldest and still existing newspaper of India is Bombay Samachar. Now it's called Mumbai Samachar in Gujarati language. It was started in 1822. Students, by next year, it will be a 200 year old newspaper. Quite an achievement. Next, let's look at satellite and computer networks. The development of electronic technology and space service has brought a great change in communication media. Computer networks has provided internet facilities. All your classes are taking place online because of such services. Emails, fax, all of this can happen because of satellite and computer networks. Artificial satellites have marked a new age in the history of global telecommunication. Radio and TV over India are done through satellite technology. The Geographical Information System, GIS, full form can come in the examination. Global Positioning System, GPS, and Remote Sensing Technology have been developed in India. What is this GIS? What is this GPS? Let's look at it. Students, what is this GIS map? So, using internet and technology, they generate different maps. So, students look at this map. By looking at this map, you can see where are their wetlands, which are the dried up lands. Blue color is for lakes. Similarly, here if you see the red areas are where the temperature is really high. So, like this, they can make different geographical maps. What is a GPS map students? So let's say you have come to Bengaluru for the first time and you go, want to go from Vidana Sauda to a shopping mall. Let's say you want to go to Mantri mall but you don't know the way. So you can open map in your phone and what map it shows you is a GPS map. So it gives you directions how you can go from one place to another. So this entire mapping system has been developed by GPS. So the GIS or Geographical Information System is a computer based system which can accumulate internet data on the earth's surface. The GPS indicates the location of a stationary or moving object or a person through pointing out the latitude and longitude and height above the sea level. The remote sensing technology collects information regarding the earth's surface. It gathers information about the distance between two objects without touching the object. See students, it uses all of this and does sensing. Look, these are how the analysis look. This is how the maps that are generated through remote sensing look. Aerial and satellite photos are taken through remote sensing. Students, this is just to show you how a 3D map looks or a map taken through remote sensing. So this is how India looks. We are in Karnataka. Where we are particularly in Karnataka? Let's look. We are at Bengaluru. We can even go to other parts of India. Or So students, look this is how India looks from above. We have so many states and the water bodies. So this is how GPS and GIS have been used and remote sensing technology has been used to communicate the various states or weather or other related phenomena. Students, this brings us to the end of the chapter. Let's do the backside exercises. For the development of villages and agriculture in India, dash means of transport is essential. Road transport is essential. The first railway line in India was laid between Bombay and Thane. Mumbai port is also called as, Mumbai port is called the gateway of India. 
Bengaluru International Airport is called the Kempe Gauda International Airport. The newspaper Bombay Samachar was started in the year 1822. First question students, define transport and communication. Transport means movement of goods, services and passengers from one place to another. Conveyance of messages from one person to another or from one place to another is called communication. Next, explain golden, quadrilateral and super highways. The golden quadrilateral is a project with four to six lane roads. It was started in the year 1999. The highway network connects major cities as well as cultural and industrial centers of the country. It connects Delhi, Jaipur, Ahmedabad, Surat, Mumbai, Pune, Bengaluru, Chennai, Vishakapatnam, Bhuvaneshwar, Kolkata, Allahabad, Kanpur and Delhi. The superhighways are divided into two divisions, the North-South Corridor which runs from Srinagar to Kanyakumari and the East-West Corridor which runs from Shilchar in Assam to Porbandar in Gujarat. The construction and maintenance of these roads is under the control of the National Highway Authority of India. Next question, give an account of railways in India. Railways are an important mode of land transport. They are very useful to carry heavy goods and large number of passengers over a long distance. They play a very important role in the development of trade and tourism and the economy of India. In India, the railways were constructed during the British period to carry army and raw materials. The first railway line was laid between Bombay and Thane. And after independence, it developed a lot. There are 16 zones in India in which railways is divided for better and efficient management. Explain briefly the importance of transport in India. Transport plays a very important role in the development of all factors of human activities, namely the primary, the secondary and the tertiary sector. It is said that if agriculture and industries are the body and bones of national organism, transport and communication are the nerves. Students, this quote in this answer is very, very important. Efficient and cheap means of transport helps to develop resources, agriculture, promotes industrial progress, widens the market, increases internal and external trade, provides employment, raises the income and standard of living of people and encourages tourism and helps defense. Write a note on airways in India. Air transport is the quickest means of transport. It's very efficient to carry passengers and mail. In times of emergency like war, earthquake, flood, air transport is very useful. India is a vast country and it has so many factors that support the development of air transport. There are two separate corporations for operational purpose. They are Air India International which provides services between India and various other countries and Indian Airlines which operates within the country and also connects the neighboring countries. Question 6. Mention the different types of communication in India. 1. There is personal. 2. There is mass communication. Letters, telephone, telegram, fax, email, internet, seminar, conference, etc. are personal communications. Newspaper, radio, television, magazines, books come under mass media. This brings us to the end of the chapter, India, Transport and Communication. A very interesting chapter students because everybody likes to travel. Everybody wants to all the time talk to their friends, talk to your relatives, talk to your parents. So communication is also very, very important. I hope you all will practice adequately. You should practice a lot in writing and you should practice maps in particular for this chapter. Okay, students, do study, do work hard, solve the subjective and objective questions as well in the SSLC Connect app. See you.